The ABCs never look so good. Today on Hands On. Five, four, three, two. It's back to basics on this 10th anniversary series of Hands On. Each show has a basic theme like patterns or letters, plus a basic how-to lesson on your favorite craft or craft material, like scrapbooking or clay or even wood. Each show also includes another basic, a painting lesson, from choosing paint to preparing your surface. At the end of the next 13 shows, you'll know everything about painting and be on your way to becoming an artist. So on each show, you can look forward to a basic theme, lots of projects, each with five steps and five ingredients. Keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative and get back to basics with hands-on. Today's back to basics theme is letters. Letters can be used to form words, a monogram, a name, or as a shape all by themselves. Sometimes it's fun to look at something you see every day in a new way, and that's what we did today on hands-on. First is a stained glass project. At first glance, you might wonder where are the letters, but you'll see. Then it's all about cutting with Melanie Bauer on today's basic lesson. There really is a right and a wrong way to cut. Then Prudy is back with a painting lesson. Today is all about painting on fabric. Then Melanie is back with a cutting project featuring letters. Last up, Tracia and Sydney Williams have a backpack tag featuring your name. So let's get started. Our first project is this great stained glass clay tile. You might ask, where are the letters? Just give me a minute and I'll show you. Here's what you're going to need. First, we have some clay tools. We have some one inch clay cookie cutters. We're using some 3D pens. And then we have all purpose glue, flour, and cornstarch. And then our basic tools are wax paper, a ruler, scissors, and masking tape. Now, in this bowl here, I've mixed a half a cup each of glue, flour, and cornstarch. You can see it makes a pretty crumbly consistency. Then you're going to knead that together, and you're going to place it on your work surface. And I've protected my work surface with a sheet of wax paper and used masking tape to hold it down. I've put my clay in the center that I've kneaded. I've put a little flour down, and then I'm going to put a little more flour right on the top of the surface just so it doesn't stick to a second piece of wax paper. I'm going to lay that wax paper on top, and then I'm going to roll this out. I want it to be a little bit less than a half inch. So I'm going to roll down. Let's see if we're pretty close here. That looks pretty good. I'll take that away. Now I want to cut my tile shape. So I've just got a plastic cutter, a plastic knife, or you can also use um, a clay cutter. And I'm going to cut down the shape, cut across. Now you can also adjust this before we're ready to let this dry. Let's go a little bit more even. Okay, that's our basic shape. Now I told you about letters. The first letter I'm taking is the letter O. I'm going to put that in the center. I'm going to wiggle it around and then pull that little plug of clay out. Now I've got some toothpicks here and you can just use that to pull that excess clay out. If your clay is a little too damp, just add a little bit more flour. So I'll pull that around. Okay, and then our next one, now I told you about letters, the next letter that I've chosen is the V. And I'm going to put the V right in front. Wiggle it around again and lift that out. And I'll take my toothpick just to pull that little section out. And don't worry if there's a little bit of clay staying to the, sticking to the bottom of the wax paper because that's all going to dry away. Now the next letter that I want to do is another V. And what I'm doing is a, a kind of almost like a starburst pattern. You can use any letter and if you look right up front of where I'm working up to here, you can see the pattern that I'm following, but you can also see below some other patterns that might use different letters. So I'm going around, creating my V's, and then I'm going to go back and pull all of these out. And I'd continue all the way around. Now the next important thing 
after I pull out all these little sections, is I want to cut away all of this excess and make sure that it's pulled away from the surface that I'm going to have dry and be my tile. Now I could add to that design. I could add another V which made those triangles. What I'm trying to do is create shapes that are going to take my paint. So I'll pull that all back. Now it's really important that you let this dry. And it's going to take quite a while, probably overnight, for this to dry. Once it's totally dry, or it looks totally dry, then you want to take it, turn it over, peel away that wax paper, and let it dry for another hour or so on the back. The key to this project is to make sure that your clay is very, very dry. So that would be my overall design. Now I have one here that I cut out and made ahead of time. As you can see, I've cut V's, I've added circles all the way around, and I cut a little bit of a hexagon shape around. The next step would be to add masking tape on the back, and I've started putting my strips. I've got a couple more here, and what I'm doing is covering every part of the surface so that I've got a backing behind it. Now it's time to take my translucent pens, and I'm going to squeeze right into this shape. Again, it's really important that you let this dry because the paint will dry translucent and then when you're all done you'll be able to peel that masking tape off the back. But it's so important that you let it dry completely or your shape will come right out. So it's a whole technique for making a stained glass window in homemade clay using paint pens, which is a very different technique. And I'm going to just add a couple other colors. You don't have to follow the same colors that we did. But remember, just a few key points. Make sure this is right side up when you start to put your paint in. Make sure you put enough paint just so that it covers the bottom and then it flows down to the edge. Always keep your toothpicks on hand and make sure that this dries completely before you peel that tape away. Let's take a look at our finished stained glass. Wouldn't that look great in a window or maybe as an ornament? Today's basic lesson is all about cutting. You might think you know how to cut, but we're gonna learn the right and the wrong way from an expert. This That's is right. Melanie Bauer from Fiskars. Hi. Hi. So what do we have here? First, there's some simple basics to learning to cut. Mm -hmm. This is gonna show you exactly what we're talking about. First, you're gonna make sure that the thumb is always on top yeah. in that smaller loop. I'm gonna do it long with okay. you. Okay. You do it so right. you can see what we're talking about. Then your pointer finger is always gonna act as the driver for the scissors. So if you have a pair of scissors with the loop, that's gonna go in the smaller loop. Okay. If you don't, if you have a pair of scissors with only the two loops, it's gonna go right in front like this. Oh, okay. Now your I other actually thought it went inside, okay, so that's different, all right. Now your other fingers are simply along for the ride. So if you've got your thumb, your pointer finger that's doing the driving, mm -hmm. and your other fingers are gonna go in the back loop, and they're just along for the ride. Now if all three of your back fingers won't fit in that loop, your pinky can just rest back alongside. Okay. So then you're just going to be opening, closing the scissors, and you're gonna be slowly pushing forward. Pretty so easy. I think we could do that. Yeah. Now, there are different kinds of scissors. There are different type of scissors for different age groups, different okay. uh, type of cutting activities. Some, for smaller age children, have a spring action or plastic blade, so they'll only cut on paper. Mm -hmm. Others, like the ones we're using, have either a blunt or a pointed tip. And then as you get older, you've got scissors that have the longer blades. We also have, um, shown here, some specialty scissors with non-stick uh, Teflon coated blades. So if you're doing a sticky or a messy craft, oh, you can simply good. wipe your blades down. Great. Okay, so we're, we're going to do some exercises. We're going to do some okay, cutting exercises okay. now that we know how we're going to cut. Okay. So if you get your, your fingers in the correct position. Before we do a structured cutting activity, these are some great exercises. Okay. The first one is called scribbling. Mm -hmm. Kind of like you do with a crayon and a piece of paper. You're just going to keep cutting in any direction. This is just a fun activity. You're cutting in different shapes, different sizes. There's really no logic to it. It just gets your hands comfortable. And you're just going to keep snipping and cutting oh, until fun. you can't can do. do this. It's a nice stress reliever. Uh -huh. <laughs> After you've done the scribbling part, mm -hmm. we're going to move on to cutting a line. Okay. So again, you're able to just line up those blades. You can do the straight line. When you've mastered that, you've got a little bit of wavy line. 
just simple things to get you warmed up. Mm -hmm. Very easy as well. There we go, okay. An added variation is to cut a line and change directions. Okay. So I'm just gonna line up here. And it's easier when you're doing this to actually turn your paper and not your scissors. Okay. So we turn the paper, not the scissors, right. always. Correct. Okay. So we've done that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I'll let you do one more. Okay. So I'm turning my paper. Exactly. It's much easier than actually and trying to turn nice your scissors. And a nice sharper point. Correct. It's okay. a lot less awkward. And last but not least, we're going to cut out different shapes. I'm going to cut out the triangle. Well, maybe you could try a different one. Okay, I'll do the circle. And again, remember to turn your paper and not your scissors, which will make cutting a lot easier. Puts a lot less strain on that cutting hand. Mm -hmm. You know what, you'd, you'd think that it's just easy. You just kind of pick up scissors and do it, but actually if you do it the right way, it makes it so much easier. Right, and if you have that and pointer finger accurate. out mm -hmm. and let him do the driving, mm -hmm. so much easier than if you try to cram all your fingers back into that back loop. Okay, now you brought some other scissors too, not just the straight ones. Not just the straight ones, I brought oh. some really fun scissors as well. These scissors um, have a decorative edge, so when you're doing a crafting project that you want to add a little bit more fun or a little bit more character to, these are what you go for. Now with this one, again, you're going to keep that pointer finger out, mm -hmm. and you'll notice in the blades that it's got a decorative design. And so we're going to show you how to line that up. Okay, I'll watch you first. So you'll go ahead and make a cut. And then when you move your scissors back in, you're just gonna line that back up again. So you can continue cutting. Now, okay, I have my scissors turned just the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay, turn them just the opposite. So you'll get a whole different shape, won't you? Exactly. Okay. With these, they're exactly like that because the loops are the same size. Mm -hmm. So you can flip them back and forth to get an opposite shape. So it would work if you're left-handed too. Yes. Definitely good for our friends that are Now, on the regular scissors, too, if you're left-handed, do you use them the same way? Are they interchangeable, mm -hmm. or are they left- and right-handed scissors? Most scissors are just like that, but we do make left- they are left-handed scissors, mm -hmm. where the blades are changed, so it gives you a great line of sight. That is great. Well, thank you so much, Melanie. Now, you're going to be back later, and we're going to do a cutting project. Yes, a cutting project. Right. This lesson is all about fabric painting. Fabric painting means anything on a textile. Um, it doesn't have to be wearable art anymore. It can be on anything, as you can see by the suitcase, the snowman. In order to start, you have to have a washed product with uh, no sizing in it, and it has to be wrinkle-free. If you're using an iron, kids, be sure that there's a parent um, around you to help. You need to stretch it over a hard surface. This is a shirt board on things that don't can't quite use a shirt board, I use pieces of cardboard. For example, the snowman has cardboard stuck under here so that I have a hard surface to work on. The first thing I did was transfer the pattern onto tracing paper. Then, unlike wood, you turn the paper over and using a soft chalk pencil or a soft graphite pencil, you go over the lines on the reverse side very carefully so that your pattern is accurate going over the whole, every line. When I'm finished with that, I turn the pattern right side up, lay it and position it right on top of my surface, and with a stylus, I can go over it, and that white chalk will go right onto your surface to make your pattern. And you have a pattern to work with. This one has been base coated but I'm gonna show you how you have to use textile paint. It takes a hard brush because you have to grind that into the textile. I'm gonna shade this with some blue and I'm going around in a circular motion to put the shading in. Put a little shading down here. So you can see it's easy to apply you just have to have the right brush and a little bit of a right technique. When it's all finished, I can add detail with a liner brush and we'll get a product like this. 
Melanie Bauer is back, and now that we learned how to cut, we're going to do a project on our theme today, which is letters. So we're making... We're making a monogram card. Oh, great. Great, you could make multiples. You could give it to a friend. Um, great. How so, do we get started? To get started, we are going to take um, a piece of paper, and we're just going to mark it. Um, our card is six inches square, so we're just going to go ahead and mark that. And I'm going to mark this one, and then let you take a turn cutting. Okay. And I've got okay, one my already cut out. Just lined up. Got your pointer finger out mm -hmm. to drive. Okay. So that six inch piece of paper, just gonna go ahead and fold that. The next piece is this floral paper, which we're also gonna cut into a square. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that as well. Oops, there's your pencil. Steal my pencil That's back exciting. real quick. And I find it easier to make um, a straight edge when I'm using the decorative edge scissors to go ahead and cut with my straight scissors first. I think it's oh, a little bit cut, easier to line up. Mm -hmm. A little bit easier to line up. Well, that way you'll be sure you have a real straight line too. Exactly. So we'll be cutting that. And then decorative edge scissors. Okay. So we're just gonna line, I like to line up the outside of the scissor with the outside of the paper. Mm -hmm. And then you're just lining up all the little bumps again so right. that you're going right down. Real easy. And this is a great design because it's pretty much repeated throughout. Okay, now how are you doing the corner? Oh, you can just cut right you can off just the cut edge. Right along okay. the edge. I like it because it gives a little bit more handmade look. And again, uh -huh. remember we're turning the paper and not the scissors. So I'm cutting all the way to the edge. And then you're going to go ahead and take it. It makes it turn. so much more, less awkward than Very, when you're trying to move your hand around. Right, and it puts a lot less strain on that hand and the scissors itself. So there's three cuts, and we'll go ahead and make four real quick. Well, the other thing, too, you told me now you're going to add ink around the edge, which right. will really bring out that the curves on the um, cuts. Right, because the paper that we're using is a real floral, and it's kind of busy. So, and to match our letter later, mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and put this ink around the side. And then I'm actually going to let you adhere it so I can start on our letter. Sounds good. So I'll go ahead and give you both pieces. Okay. I'll get the card on. And then what we're going to do next, take our black sheet of paper. And I have this T from a different project that I'm reusing. And to make sure that it's on the back, actually it's a gray sheet on the back. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to flip this over. Oh, I noticed now. Oh, you did flip it over because we're going to use the other side. Right. So, so you want your T right to be right. backwards. So we're okay. going to go ahead and trace. Mm -hmm. And then it's time to cut. Okay. Now again, this one. Another thing I like to do to make it a little bit easier, instead of using this whole big sheet, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna trim it out real quick. Then it's easier for me to turn the paper. Okay, you're turning and meeting the other cut rather right. than trying to go because, around from the first right, cut. Right, because with the T, you've got the straight and you've got the curves. So it's easier to kind of line them up that way and do individual cuts instead of making one long cut. Mm -hmm. Makes it so much easier. Well, you know what, if you were cutting stars or something that's real intricate, right? you definitely, well, of course, like on, a, on the letter too. Exactly, so we're just going, we're making several small cuts and we're turning our paper. To go around that curve again. Because the curve is the tricky part. Have another straight edge at the bottom of the T. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and get this big piece out of the way. That's a good tip, to cut, a, to cut away your excess paper. Right. So you're working with a smaller piece. And then we've got our T again Perfect on the black. Tea. I'll go ahead and adhere that on. Oh, I like the way that adhesive comes out too, <laughs> just in little pieces. So that nice, all right, we'll make sure, let's do it this way. The T's a little bit taller. And we're just gonna simply adhere that on. So then you've got a so great cute. card that can use for about any occasion. Well, you know what, and we made that in less than three minutes, so we could make, think how many you could make if you had a little bit, or one evening. It's a great gift. And it's all done great. Hi. Well, Melanie, thank you so much for teaching us great cutting techniques and a great letter project, well, thanks too. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Sydney and I are working on projects all about letters. Today's show is all about letters, and there's a lot of things you can do with letter beads. We've got just a few fun ideas to share with you. Sydney's so starting on this room plaque that she's making using spangles, gluing them down with glue. And while she's working on this, I'm going to go over and let's work on a couple little backpack tags and we'll come back to Sydney's project. 
Backpack tags are easy to make. You can put them on your uh, backpack, you put them on a key ring. They're fast, they're fun, and they are liked by both boys and girls. So they're a good project for just about any age group. I'm using cotton cord, and what I've done is I've just taken two lengths of it, put it together, made a loop. I'll put this loop through a split ring. Now this split ring happens to be heart-shaped, but of course you can use heart, or you can use round, just a standard key ring, and we'll pull the cord, and then I'm gonna tie it in a knot, and that will hold it in place. And then from there, you can do whatever you like, adding beads, tying knots, adding beads. So let's just use some beads out of our bead soup. Sydney and I have a bead soup, and when we do a project and we have leftover beads, we just put the extra beads into a bowl and we call it bead soup. So we're gonna use the beads out of our bead soup and pick out different beads, add them to the cords, tie knot, add another bead. Sydney is a softball player, so we'll add, we'll add a uh, softball bead for you, Sid. And maybe add the message, go team. Does that sound good? Uh-huh. Okay, now we just continue. And you can go on and on. You, does, you can put beads as close or as far apart as you like. You'll see on the samples that we have here that we've added words, we've added bling beads. It's a really easy and fun thing to do. Let's go back over and take a peek at what Sydney's working on. She's building layers using the spangles, and she just added a clay bead. Now, how, what did you do to that clay uh, ladybug before you put it on there? Did you have to pull something out? I had to take out the ring at the top. Okay, because those are charms. Yeah. Spin it and take it off. Using the needle nose, let me help. Sometimes you might need a little help from adult. Just grab it and pull. It's real easy. You're adding that, and then what's next? What's the next step after you add that guy? Oh, you're gonna add, add the words? Yes, then you just do a line. Okay. Cross like that. Okay. Then I'll do a little line for okay. the red room. And then just add the beads, and then that glue will dry clear, and all you'll see are beads. That's really neat. Now, on the project you've done here, there's a handle, and that was made just by simply taking a piece of cotton cord, threading on beads in any pattern that you like. We used a mix of resin beads and plastic beads. And then once you have the desired length, you'll tie another knot, and you'll just glue that excuse me, Sid, right down into these holes that we've drilled into the top of each of the humps on the heart. Once that's dry, it's ready to hang. Let's take a look at some of the chalkboards that we've made. Similar to the same idea as the room plaques, we drilled some holes, added some word beads. Who is this? Zach. And who's that? My brother. Oh, I see. And Sydney made the one over there on the far end for Lauren. Who's Lauren? My friend. That's really cool. Are you going to give that to Lauren for a special occasion or something? Uh-huh. You can see that letter beads are easy to use. You can glue them. You can string them. We've even wired them onto these safety pins to make these cute friendship backpack pins. Very simple and easy to do. And let's take a peek, just jumping back here at the, at the um, blackboard to show how simple it is to add the words. We've used the cotton cord again. We've knotted it, and then all we do is just take it through the holes, tie a knot. You can use as many um, strands as you'd like on both ends. And then you just secure it, just like we did on the, uh, on the other samples. Very easy and fun. Let's go back and take another look at the chalkboard. The one we did for Zach has simple braiding, some wood beads, and some sports beads to make a nice boy theme. The piece next to it is a frame, and a frame is easy to embellish with alphabet letters. You can drill simple holes, put a word or a sentiment, add some shell charms like we did. 
And the last one that Sydney did, she did some simple braiding, added some metallic cube alphabet beads. And Sydney, I really like the way that you added that long fringe. That looks really cool on there. Now let's take one more look at the backpack tags. You can make those for teams or for special occasions. They're fun and easy to do. Don't forget to add words and sentiments. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. And that's all the things you can do with letters. Letters are used for your initials and to form your name, first and last. And your last name is called a family name. It's one way to designate the members of your family. On our next show, we talk about family history and projects to highlight just how special your family is. See you then on Hands On. Projects and ideas for today's show are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This show is number 1006. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com.